Welcome back to the channel everyone, I'm George. Today we're gonna to be talking about Intermediate Shaft Bearing Kit for the VR6 and why it's so special and crucial. Um, the Intermediate Shaft Bearing Kit or the Bearing Replacement Procedure is not something that's often talked about in the VR6 world. Uh, it's something that's forgot about till it becomes a problem. Uh, if you remember in one of our older videos for Stavs, uh, we had a clicking sound on the inside of the motor after a fresh build um, and we had no idea what it was. Ended up tracing it all the way down to these bad boys. It's literally about a $25 kit and this will save you from having to pull the motor again, especially after a fresh engine rebuild. So on the 3.2, the R30 VR6 that we're building for my RS3, I wanted to go over this uh, in particular with you guys to show you guys what's so important about it and how easy it is to install and you could do it literally at home. So for those of you home builders that are looking to, you know, continue doing stuff on your own, this is a relatively easy procedure with some basic tools. Uh, with that said, take a grain of salt as I'm not a professional, so I don't have a bearing kit removal tool. Basically be using an assortment of sockets and straight screwdrivers out ruining any of the bearing races and popping these out and then putting the new caps on on the back of my R30 VR6. So without further ado guys, uh, let's show you guys how it comes off, where it's located at, and how we're gonna replace it. Oh, on the back of the VR6 engine, uh, prior to complete buildup in the head, I wanted to go over the intermediate shaft uh, bearings, gonna be two of them, one small one all the way on the inside. I don't know if you guys can see that. And then this outer larger one here that usually never gets replaced unless you actually know about it. Again, for us, we're learning. Uh, we're not exactly professionals, we're in a professional race shop. So learning about this stuff on the fly and then having to search it, there's not actually a lot of topics or people talking about it, which is unfortunate because this is a critical aspect of the build, or at least we think so, especially when it comes to putting something together and then you know doing something fresh, you're replacing all the bearings on the mains and also on the rods, you're doing a, a big build on the car and then you know a $20, $30 bearing kit is something you skimp out on or didn't realize that you need. So we're gonna go over it. There's a front opening here towards the back, all right? And that's gonna pop off that cap. There's a smaller little bearing there. And then the large one here, we're gonna end up just popping out and removing. And then we'll pop the new ones in place. I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna do that. All right, so we're gonna first start by taking these uh, professionally calibrated two extensions, three eighths. And we ended up just taking it all the way down the center, putting it on that center uh, cap, and then just a couple taps. I'm gonna hit it with my purse real quick. All right, Stav, uh, can you give me the more heavy duty hammer? Cause uh, it seems that my uh, my Harbor Freight rubber hammer ain't gonna do it. Let me get Mjolnir real quick. Got Mjolnir. I think I got it out. So then that's pretty much popped out. As you can see now, there's basically a hole in the backside. I'm gonna see if I can recover that cap for you so I can show you guys what it looks like. And on the back side, you're just popping over this crevice right here. And again, that's just a cap on the back side. And that's where this smaller bearing that goes all the way in the front that we're gonna push out here in the next second. There's the cap that we removed. So just use two extensions and then had it popped off and removed. And then kind of cool thing with the shimmel kit is it already comes with a new cap. And then we're gonna use some, uh, some, uh, some Loctite on the end of it and then pop it in place once we replace the two bearings. One of the cool things, or one of the important things is we're gonna have to line up the bearing race with the oiling portion of this bearing. So just make sure when you guys are installing, you guys are matching that up and not covering it up with the new bearing kit. Again, the new bearing is gonna come with its own little hole in it too. So everything's gonna be pretty much the same OE spec. Just make sure you line that up. I'm gonna show you guys here in just a moment. I wanted to mention, so your intermediate shaft is what basically drives your, your oil pump. So the two gears that are going to go here run a shaft that travel all the way down to the oil pump and basically drive your oil pump. So it's going to see a lot of abuse. It's going to be spinning a lot I and mean, it's mechanically driven. So as fast as the, pretty much the car is going to go, you're, you're spinning this now. It guys knows how many RPM. If anybody happens to know for the VR6 at what RPM this intermediate shaft uh, spins on, sometimes the uh, engineers from Volkswagen or Audi watch this. If you happen to know, let us know but it's important to get this replaced as this is a crucial element of your engine's health. You know what I mean? All right, take your professional grade Harbor Freight little flathead. Try to be careful so you don't destroy the bearing race. So 
So yeah, it's just coming right up, and I'm not damaging the back side of that at all. Just being somewhat gentle, and then I'm gonna bounce on the other side. It's gonna be a little tricky. Come on, hit it, man. I don't want to damage it, so I'm just going nice and slow. Hey, Ra, come here. There we go. On the other side. Boom! See? So it pops off pretty much easily. You don't damage or score or anything like that on the bearing race. And again, take everything with a grain of salt as we're not super pros, but I'm just using our Harbor Freight extra long flathead and I'm just pushing this old bearing out. Now, if you can take a look at the new bearing and the old bearing, they're somewhat almost really close except for a few thou, probably on thickness. In fact, stop, grab a set of digital calipers real quick. Measure this. In fact, I think it's right there, stop. Right there. Measure now the small one right here, or the old one. Mm -hmm. Let's see what it measures out to. Let's see what the thickness is, or at least how, I don't know how, when this was replaced, but at least we'll be able to tell. 1.51 millimeters. Okay, let's zero that out. Close yeah. it, zero it out. Measure mm -hmm. the new one, 1.1. 1. 1. 1.51. 1. 1.63. 1.63. So 1.51 to 1.63. So about ten thousands. Just a ten thousand. So this might have been replaced at least some portion of this engine's life, or it might have been just the OE one. But keep in mind, this engine came out of a Turek, so it wasn't a lot of power coming out of this VR6. There wasn't a lot of abuse. Um, wasn't a lot of strain on this drive. Similar to what's going to happen now. Twenty-four <laughs> miles. So yeah. So we're going to be putting a brand new bearing in and sliding it in. Uh, but first, we've got to knock out now that smaller one that's all the way towards the front, which we're going to pop out right now. So, for the smaller bearing that's all the way deep into that cavity, we're just using a socket that's pretty much matched up with that bushing, I mean that bearing, and we're just going to push it out that way, so this way we don't damage anything with that long screwdriver. If any of you replicate this, uh, just send us, uh, like, what, 10, 15 bucks royalty? I think that's fair. Coming? Keep going. Yep, it's coming. Go. All right, got it. Oh, you damaged this one a little bit. Yeah. Damaged the old bearing, but not the actual yeah, not the engine part. Yeah, this is nice and smooth. It's on the inside. So, stop. Should we put the uh, was it the calibrated 50 pounds of oil behind that bearing, or what? When we install it. Absolutely. So, larger bearing goes on the outside. And then the inner portion is going to be that smaller bearing that we're going to push in here in just a second. Instead of damaging the old bearing out with the flat screwdriver, but then the socket worked perfect. Yeah, but the whole goal is not to just not to mess up the mating surface. Yeah, the mating good. surfaces are nice and smooth. Yeah. Thank God I didn't scratch any of that stuff. So now we're getting ready to install the new bearing kit and cap. And we're in. In like Flynn. New bushing put in. Professional money. Well, galleys lined up too. I think we'll be, I think we'll be golden stuff. All right, let's put that cap in. Let me wipe all the lube from here because we're gonna put Loctite. And why are we putting Loctite, George? Uh huh. Loctite. No, we'll keep the cap in place. Make sure no leaks or anything like that. Yeah, though, or you know. Might see some pressurization here, and at least the cap will be in. Heard of people blowing these out with big builds. Heard. All right, so it's time to slap the cap on and apply just a little bit of Loctite. Just a little bit. Might be already too much, but we're gonna apply a little bit just to kind of keep this cap extra secured down where it needs to, you know. And that's it, you just place it there and it's fine, right, Sal? Yep, don't do anything else after. <laughs> Can I get the uh, half inch? Um, actually, Sal, give me a socket that matches that cap. Here. Yeah, 
I'd say that fucker's in pretty good, huh, stuff? Would have been cool if we had like a little mini press or something that can press that in. But line up the hole. I'm sure they make a tool for it, but a tool that we'll probably use once in our lifetime. Let's see. Let's line this up now. Success. Nice. So there's your intermediate shaft and that's what drives it. So look, no play. And just to go to show you like, you know, for the other one that was worn out, there was a tenth of play. When you're revving this thing to you know 8,500, let's say this thing revs at half the speed, I'm not exactly sure exactly what, what the RPM is. I'm sure somebody will make fun of us. Even though they are very similar size and gearing, you know, that excessive play is what was causing knocking on my motor. So, you know. Well, the fact that you're using a 12 valve was causing knocking on your motor. Yeah, you're using a 12 valve crank just to make power. So we all have to give you know, a trade off. Well, right? at least someone in this garage has to make power stuff. If it's going to be somebody, it's going to be me. <laughs> it's going to be on a 24 valve. It's not going to be in yeah, a 12 I mean, valve. Second time, I mean, third engine build for this car finally maybe you can beat me hey anyway. the other couple engine builds those were strictly five cylinder though and those didn't count yeah, six is greater than five i'll give you my <laughs> we'll agree on this one so intermediate shaft bearing complete now we're just gonna uh pretty much i don't know put the intermediate shaft away because we're gonna get ready to build the rest of this motor up and do the timing kit but that's pretty much your kit guys that's gonna be the basic install for the intermediate shaft it's gonna be those two bearings from Shilver Performance and that cap. And as you guys can see, probably took, I don't know how long this video is gonna be, what, five to eight minutes? 35 minutes of you talking. But make sure when you guys <laughs> install this that all the, uh, you know, the holes are in the right spot so you don't block the oil you know, going, going away from the motor. Yeah, 100%. And then, uh, again, take everything you see with a grain of salt with us using a socket to kind of hammer it in place. I'm sure there's like a press kit, a tool that bolts up that presses Somebody, it purposely. Somebody's screaming right now. Somebody's ah, screaming, I make their tool. And it tool's just like bolts 10 bucks. up. Tool's like 10 bucks. Yeah, tool's like $10 in Germany <laughs> or something. But um, if you guys can, post it in the comments below. If we're not using the right tool, if there's something else we could use, like a mini press that can kind of bolt on here, I'll pick it up as long as it's like under 40 bucks. Aside from, you know, a socket from Harbor Freight that we end up using to hammer it in. But that's pretty much it, guys. That's the install for the intermediate, uh, intermediate shaft bearing kit from Schimmel Performance. Again, we wanted to do a video on just this alone because we think this is a crucial part of any VR6 engine build that literally no one talks about. No one mentions this, but it's on Schimmel's website. You can check it out. I'll link it in the comments below so you guys can see it. Hit them up. It's about 20 or 30 bucks. And Schimmel Performance ships pretty fast. I'm really happy with the way they kind of ship over stuff. So you buy it on a Monday, you probably have it by like Friday, the latest of the weekend, so you can do your uh, do your project. And this $35 kit will uh, make you lose oil pressure if you if this thing goes bad before you replace one. So it's a, it's definitely a, well. I was telling them in the beginning of the video too. Imagine not doing this, and then like we did with your car, having to take the engine out of the car. Uh. That was like engine pull 35 yeah. out of 40. Yeah, go back to engine pull 35 in our uh, time lapse on my motor, you son of a bitch. <laughs> so that's pretty much it, guys. We want to do, again, a quick video on just the intermediate shaft bearing kit. Hopefully, you guys found it helpful. Uh, again, if you have any ideas on those parts or those press kits, if one exists, maybe we should make one. I'm sure they make one. Jordan. I'm sure they make one for like 10 bucks. Sure, there's something like universal you could bolt in the back and just press a bearing yeah. in, but... Uh, that's pretty much it guys. Uh, this is gonna be us. our second video now yeah. that we back. Stav's video posted Monday. Uh, today's Wednesday, so we're gonna have another update for Stav's wiring. Now that he's got the car firing up, we won't tease it, but on got six the, cylinders, on six cylinders. <laughs> we got the car firing up with the ECU relocated uh, in the glove box. Just right now, it's on the outside of the car. Uh, but the next video we'll be posting, I think either Saturday or Sunday, maybe Monday latest, later on this week. But we're back to posting, guys. We appreciate all the support. Again, we're kicking this off, trying to get this car now rewired, ECU relocated, and now the built engine inside the RS3, and then we can go racing hopefully here in the next few weeks and to kick off the season. And after with the wiring stuff, we're gonna get into the Cyvex where we're gonna start showing how we did the setup on the fuel pumps. The, there's the there's, there's no we, there's no we, that's all stuff. I gotta give him credit. There's no, well, when it comes to wiring, that's all stuff. That's George, all stuff. George is gonna order the pizza, so Stav is happy you know, to work on the car. There's right? no good pizza in California, unfortunately. But Thank you, thank you for finally admitting that. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, guys, I'm George. I'm Stav. This is Malaka Motorsports, and we'll catch you guys on the next video. Later. Later, guys.